Toboso Yana is the creator of Twisted Wonderland. In this interview from the 2020 Magical Archives Game Guide, she explains her role, the movies that influenced the game, early development ideas and the name, Twisted Wonderland. When I was first approached, the only thing that had been decided was that the theme would be Disney villains, there was basically nothing decided about what the content of the game would actually be. It was a blank slate. I thought I was only being asked to be the character designer, so at my first meeting with Disney, instead of introducing myself, I just took out some rough illustrations of a few of my character design ideas and said, these are the kinds of drawings I do. The Disney Japan representative looked at the roughs, but then started asking me, what kind of world do these characters live in? What is their connection to the Disney villains? And as I answered these questions, we created a draft of the world setting and story between us. Then I started explaining the different characters in manga format, drawing backgrounds to set the world, etc., and before I knew it, I was suddenly in charge of creating the basis for the entire game. Once a rough outline of the world and story had been decided, I reached a point where pinning down the looks of the characters made it easier to work on the story specifics, so then came the character design. We originally planned to create between 10 and 15 different dormitories. We also had a rough design for the motif of another, separate work, but it was put in storage when we decided on the current seven dormitories. It was originally not going to be a school for mages, but an academy that teaches villains how to do evil things. That idea was rejected because it got very problematic. Looking back on it now, I think, well, duh. I create the scenarios and I write the main story. I am also in charge of drafting, writing, and directing the events and vignettes. On the graphics side I do all of the character design including designing the chibis, all the card illustrations and designs for the props and backgrounds. The dialogue in lessons, on the home screen, and when the cards are leveled was created jointly by myself and a scenario writer from my own studio, D6. We had a setting sheet with detailed settings for each character that had information on their background, family structure, personality, talents, etc., as well as a motivation chart for each class, which we used as our basis for the creation of the game. However, this was our first time writing lines for a game, we were completely in the dark during production, unable to imagine the atmosphere that would be influenced by the dialogue. Of course, F4 Samurai explained all of their work to us, but when we tried to test the game, we found that many parts were completely different from what we had been imagining. The dialogue and scenes did not mesh, a number of lines had to be re-recorded, overall, many of the characters ended up acting annoyed, so every time I used an item for training I was repeatedly told, what, don't bother me, shut up, I thought, wow, okay, this is annoying. Right up until the release of the game, everything was just so hectic. The setting and visual design were done almost simultaneously. We set up the characters as personalities and physical appearance, keeping in mind that they are all fans of these Disney villains. Everyone knows what it's like to want to buy something because of a celebrity they admire, or wear colors that remind them of their favorite fictional character, right? I styled these characters while keeping that in mind. They both admire and respect the Great Seven and their subordinates. I watched the films that the game draws inspiration from over and over again. I must have watched 300 hours of Disney movies. I also learned a lot about Disney's approach to filmmaking and storytelling from audio commentaries by production staff and from documentaries. I also watched the Descendants TV series, which stars the children of Disney villains, and the Little Princess Sophia series, in which princesses from previous generations appear as guests. Both were inspired by classic Disney animated films, but had different angles, and they were invaluable reference material for the game. Then there is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I was particularly influenced by the Avengers series, in which characters from multiple films crossover in the same world. We had several other ideas besides a world where magic exists. We considered a world of show business, and a wholly magical world, as well. After a few twists and turns, we finally decided on a school for the setting, mostly because we thought that, even in an entirely different world, a school would be a place that people can all understand. 
I also felt that since the game was originating in Japan, I wanted to create a stage with a Japanese pop culture feel. I also thought that a school setting would help create the same atmosphere found often in light novels and young adult novels. Actually, until about halfway through development, we'd been planning to use a Japanese language title. Something like Villains' School Story. The development team had come up with the title, but we weren't 100% decided. Then Anaplex reached out to me about a name that I had submitted along with my rough sketches, Twisted Wonderland. They said that it was an exciting title and they had liked the way that it sounded when I presented my designs for the setting. That caught me by surprise. I had only come up with it for use as a provisional name, a placeholder, because we had needed some kind of way to refer to the world for communication purposes. It was just something simple to make things easier for the development team, and, with their support, it was adopted as the title of the project. Now it is a title that I am very attached to.